Coming up in this video, it's time to head into the unknown. Lucy is loving life on the road. Dinner includes overnight parking. Once again, we find ourselves downwind of a dump. And cute little Lucy turns into Lucifer. We are Ben and Rebecca, a couple of travelers from Alaska with the dream of driving around the world with our road dog, Lucy. COVID has put a kink in our plans, so we're killing time and making the most of life in one of our favorite places, Baja, California, Mexico. These films are produced through the support of you, the Outliers YouTube community. Click join on our channel for early video releases, exclusive content, increased engagement, and so much more. Before we try to find our groove again, Let's share how we lost it in the first place. After crossing the border to rescue a puppy in San Felipe, we drove 700 miles down the Baja California Peninsula and spent a month living at an Airbnb in La Paz. By the end of our stay, Lucy was still in the midst of getting vaccinated and developing the immunity necessary to travel in Mexico. So we spent five additional weeks camped at an RV park in the gringo town of Los Barriles. And once again, we find ourselves back on the road. Well, it's a quarter to four. Whoa, look at that bird just oh my gosh. sunning itself. Wow, a vulture. There's another one over here to the left. I've <laughs> okay. never seen anything like that. Oh, Joe. That's awesome. Okay, so where was I? A quarter we, to four. It's a quarter to four. We have moved uh, since you've last seen us in Los Barriles. We busted out two days driving up north because, once again, we ran from something. We got to run from the damn weather. And that is a problem because you want to be able to work around the weather, but we don't have air conditioning in this back box. And that is the biggest problem. It was pushing 88 degrees the other day in that box just parked in Los Bariles. And there's a hot spell moving through right now and it's supposed to get up to 100 degrees in some spots. So our solution was come to the Pacific Coast. So that meant passing a lot of really cool, beautiful stuff. And I just know that we'll be back and I know that we'll never ever cover the entire peninsula. But the little randomness of the day is like, okay, we're reaching the Pacific coast. Oh, Punta Abrelos. Let's go down there. Bust out the church's book and like, ah, yes. Right on the Pacific. Fishing village. Maybe whales. Maybe surf fishing. Maybe snorkeling. I saw a little symbol on the side of the road. That just all sounds like good things to me. I actually really love days like this because we were kind of feeling at loose ends. Not sure where to go. We didn't really quite just want to go into Guero Negro just yet. And we got up to this point where you turn down to Punta Eparejo. And Ben was like, I've always wanted to turn down that road. And I was like, me too. Why don't we? <laughs> So we did! And that's the fun of this is there's always new, more things to explore. You just never, you just never get it all done. I think we're in for good stuff. It's a 47 mile road down to the beach and it's already looking pretty gorgeous with the mountains off in the distance. So this is going to be fun. Having no particular place to go on this side trip was refreshing, so we decided to let our love of seafood lead the way, and the rest will unfold as it may. This plan landed us in the town of La Bocana, and it did not take long before I accidentally ran one of their tiny stop signs. We wove our way through town and down to the coast, hoping to find a good meal and a place to park for the night. We have made it to Bocana on the Pacific Ocean. It's right next door to Punta Abrejos where we were kind of headed but decided to come here instead. We found the restaurant with the lobster and they're gonna let us stay overnight for free with the purchase of dinner. And this is our view! Isn't it gorgeous? There's seashells and seabirds everywhere, fishing boats along the water, 
I saw some kite surfers down the way and the breeze is amazing. It's dropped six degrees inside the truck just since we parked. This is definitely a much welcomed change in temperature and I think we will have a very nice three remaining weeks to our time on Baja. Now it's time for dinner coming into the restaurant Cabanas. And uh, since we have Lucy with us, we have to sit outside. That's kind of one of the things about traveling with a dog. She's happy though. She's gonna be ready to go for a little run later. She's a little full of it from the ride. And lo and behold, their specialty here at Cabanas is seafood. They have everything, seafood, pasta, lobster, just, yeah, tacos, sashimi. Okay, they're not uh, fresh made chips, but they do come in a shell. First course is up and we ordered fresh oysters and it came with some edible seaweed. So that'll be interesting to try. Bottoms up. Here we go. Mm, so Excuse good. Me. Mm. Your lobster is fried lobster and oh. or cook it lobster. Quick clarification, whether fried or steamed lobster. Well, I'm gonna start off with my vegetables. <laughs> And the verdict is? Interesting. Not bad by any means, but... Looks like it tastes like grass. A little salty. Okay. But a little seaweedy taste, but mm -hmm. not bad. A little bit of sauce. I'm good on lime. Mm. Delicioso. This is a very good oyster. It is, isn't it? That looks good. The halibut fish tacos look good too. First bite of lobster and my mouth is watering. Mm. Oh my God, that's really good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Hey buddy, you showed up too late. All the food's gone. Hmm? You're more infatuated with Lucy. Well, Lucy's excited to go for her walk, and it is downright chilly. I had to put a uh, this little kind of flannelly type of thing on, but it's nice. A very refreshing change on the other side. This beach is called Estero de la Bucana, which literally translates to Mouth of the Estuary. This is not only a safe place to anchor boats, but it's also known for amazing kayaking. We really miss our kayaks, and we know we need to remedy that problem sooner rather than later. After two months of keeping Lucy off the beaches, it's great knowing she's fully vaccinated and ready to enjoy everything the travel lifestyle has to offer. Good morning. This is our view. The commercial fleet is heading out to work. Got pretty warm last night, like a switch flipped and the wind changed directions and it got downright warm. Instead of cool, it was warm. But yeah, everybody's heading out to work to go catch all the fish that we all enjoy eating so much. Beautiful day though. Good morning Lucy. What do you think of this view? Huh? Are you still getting used to having an ever-changing view every single day? Sometimes every hour? New smells? Oh. This is gonna be a good life for a little dog, huh? Well, it didn't take long for the wind to pick up and we're gonna take Lucy for a stroll on the beach before hitting the road.
Well, it's 10 a.m. in La Bocana. We are on the road. We have a general idea of where we're going, but literally there are no set plans. And it's an invigorating way to live. We don't get to do it as often as we would like. So it's gonna take a little bit of adjustment because we've been at an Airbnb for a month and then stuck at a uh, RV park campground in Los Briles for five weeks. So we are gonna have to find our adventure and travel group again. It took a while to wind our way out of town and I guarantee there was a more efficient way, but we finally found a dirt road heading up the Pacific coast. Okay, this road is too rough of a uh, washboard. <laughs> We took the tires down to 50 and it's already a much smoother ride. I think that was one for the win. We also locked the hubs. We're not anticipating needing four wheel drive, but just in case it makes it so it's only a buttons push away. You know, yesterday we were kind of, uh, been especially questioning if we made the right decision by coming this far north and to the Pacific side so soon um you know we did it because the temperature just really shot up over on the sea of cortez side um but we also started to realize if we hadn't stayed in los Bariles as long as we did then this is probably about where we would be so we're just kind of playing a little bit of catch up and now that we have found some back road adventures to have i think we're gonna have a really good time and explore a part of Baja that, aside from seeing the gray whales, we've just always driven right through. Okay, we are slowly bouncing our way down this road along the coast and we've covered about 16 miles and somebody we met yesterday said you come to a fork in the road where there's two split rocks those are definitely split rocks and he said go to the left the road is a uh, far better driving surface so that could be a, a very helpful tip for us because this is pretty darn rough just saying, I love it, we're adventuring, but washboard roads can really, really wear on you. I'm a little cautious about driving on salt flats after getting horribly stuck on one outside of San Quentin 15 years ago. In this case, we are grateful for the recommendation and enjoyed a smooth ride for about 10 miles. At these speeds, it did not take long before finding evidence of a town, because we were apparently downwind of the local dump. We are approaching the small fishing village of Playa Oceano Pacifico. It didn't have much to offer, so we passed right on through. Just outside of town starts a network of dirt roads that crisscross each other, all while going the same direction. We must be nearing a larger town. We have found pavement, finally. After 50 miles and six hours, without much dilly-dallying, just a couple of potty stops. It's clear on the right. All right. And this is the road that leads out to the Mexican one from Bahia Ascension. It's been a really long day. Neither of us are feeling like cooking too much. So we're gonna explore town, maybe find a place to grab some tacos, hopefully find a place close to the beach with a nice breeze and a cool place to stay for the night. It doesn't look very nice to me. I know what people are saying online. Well, this looks far better of a place to go camping. Yeah. 
I don't really wonder basically if I anywhere on the beach in town is fine. Well, Lucy approves of this campsite. Now we can search for dinner, which wasn't too hard because there only seems to be one option, Loncheria Marie. The beer was cold, the fish and shrimp tacos were hearty, and the service was friendly. This is just what we needed after a long day's drive. Okay, four by four high. We got a little air off the tires, completely soft, but I'll bounce down onto the beach here. Just gonna take a second here and get situated. Okay, we started off going this way, then we went that way, and now we're going this way again to uh, get up here above the high tide line. Our first impressions of Bahia Asuncion are quite nice. The town is clean, the beach is beautiful, and the camping is free. There's even a voice and text cell tower in town. What more could we ask for? The following morning, the wind finally died down enough for a drone flight. Since crashing, our nicer Mavic Air 2 and Los Briles were using our backup, a Mavic Mini. It may not be the most powerful drone, and it doesn't have the best camera, but its small size makes it the perfect backup drone. I love having four-wheel drive. Being able to camp on the beaches is the best part of overlanding. <laughs> now that we're done with the dirt roads for a while, we need to air up the tires, and every town in Mexico has a Yantera. Another thing on the old to-do list is to replace our onboard air compressor. It's never worked since buying the truck, and I've tried to fix it, but determined it needs an overhaul kit, which costs over $500. New compressor units and tanks are actually substantially cheaper, so we'll replace it one of these days. Now, in case there isn't a Yantera, we carry a small compressor that would get the job done, but it would take hours to fill the tires back up to 65 PSI. The road out of Bahia Asuncion is in great shape. There is one more town to visit out here by turning left towards Bahia Tortugas, but we're gonna save that for another trip and make a right turn. We are now passing through El Vizcayano Biosphere Reserve. It's almost 10,000 square miles of protection for the flora and fauna, and it's actually the largest wildlife reserve in Mexico. Marked Tope. What a Tope, you come out of nowhere. <laughs> Upon reaching the town of Alberto Andres Alvarado Ambruro, we turn north on Highway 1 towards Guerrero <laughs> Negro. It's a little confusing. It was. You got the little frontage roads and then you got the main road. With oncoming traffic, so yeah. it's hard to tell if it was our direction or not. Who are you parking at? protecting the truck. Guerrero Negro is more than a place to get fuel and buy scallops from a random guy in a car. It also hosts the annual gray whale migration and is the home of salt farming. When the fields get flooded, the water evaporates and leaves the salt to be harvested. We're on our way out to the old wharf. It used to be part of the salt farm, but is now a base of operations for shellfish farming. Well, it's time to cook up those scallops uh, that we got from a guy at a gas station here in Guerrero Negro. We've been uh, just hanging out, watching a movie, got Rocky Six wrapping up in the background there. Uh, the temps are way cooler. Even after a day of driving, which heats this place up, it's 68 degrees in here right now. What do you think about that, Lucy? 
What's up, puppy dog? And how are you doing this evening? I am so enjoying like being able to lay under a blanket. I can't remember the last time I did this. Maybe like in the Sierra. We call this Lucifer. <laughs> I think she's hungry. Oh, there's sweet Lucy and then there's <laughs> Lucifer. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well enough with the puppy cuteness and here's how dinner's going. Since we have one and a half burners, this is being done in stages. I got the uh, rice boiling on this side, which is the hot side. And then once it got to its temperature and started boiling and doing its thing, I moved it over to the cooler side. But this is, oh, oh, gosh, I've been fussing with the camera and I burnt my damn beans. All right, well, hey, let me turn this heat down real quick. That should do it. Now for the rice, uh, this is the stuff we commonly see. Arroz, Super Extra, Verde Valley. Uh, this is something I found at the store last time. Arroz para sushi. So this is, I'm hoping, is gonna be more like a uh, cow rose type of uh, rice, which gets a little bit sticky. Okay, so this is what a kilo of scallops looks like and we when we picked them up we ended up uh, just grabbing one of our reusable gallon bags and uh, put it in there just so we didn't get like fish muck in our uh, fridge but yeah let's season these up seriously a kilo that's a lot of scallops oh well leftovers are good and I'm gonna season them up with uh, Old Bay you know pretty timeless flavor there these aren't the giant uh, type of scallops, but they are going to be very tasty. A little trick we figured out to get Lucy back is to feed Lucifer. And then our sweet girl will be back. Looks like I may have to do this about four times to get all the food cooked. Well, here's something you may not know. There's a company called Baja Shellfish Farms, and it's located right here in Grado Negro, and they farm scallops, uh, oysters, and all kinds of, obviously, hence the name shellfish, here in the bay and ship it, I believe up to the states as well, but all over the peninsula for sure. And it is fabulous seafood. The oysters we got earlier in this video, those were from right here. Maybe even those beds right out there. I just powered down the stove. There's the rice, it tastes great. There's the green beans, and this is all that I've cooked up already. Time to eat dinner. The scallops for $7.50 for a kilo. That's a really good price, and they look and taste amazing. You also notice the new plates that we got while we were down here. I also got some new bowls, so I'm kind of excited about that. We found them in La Paz. Yep. Well, this seems like a, a very fitting point to end this video. We're gonna pick the next one up right here in Guerrero Negro. Not quite sure exactly where we're going yet, but that's all part of the fun. Thanks for watching. Coming up in our next video, we're restocking for another adventure. Carnitas is on the menu. We're sharing how to get unlimited mobile internet in Mexico. Lucy is reunited with Lola and we share the hardest part of traveling alone in Baja. We would like to thank the Outliers community for supporting production of these videos. You guys are the best. Click join on our YouTube channel for early video releases, exclusive content, increased engagement, and so much more.